When it comes to quantizing live drums in Cubase, there's several methods you can use, but which one is the best? So let's jump in Cubase and check this out. I'm gonna show you three methods you can use to quantize live drums. And I'm also gonna show you what works best for me when I edit drums. Okay, first what I'm gonna do here, I have a drum recording that was sent to me by a friend of mine. It's a raw recording, so let's have a quick listen. So the drum performance is a bit loose as far as the timing goes. So I'm gonna fix this with the tools I have in Cubase. Uh, the first way I can quantize live drums is to do it manually. Okay, so let's try this out. First, I'm gonna select all of my drum tracks, right click and make sure uh, they are in the same folder. So I'm gonna select move selected tracks to new folder. Let's call this one drums all right make it red and i'm going to click on group editing so this way all tracks a part of this folder will be edited at the same time which is going to make all those tracks follow each other every time i make a knitted move okay so let's say i'm cutting this part you know i'm creating some cuts here it's going to affect all tracks inside that folder now something important is you have to make sure that those tracks that are in the same folder are exactly the same when it comes to the length of the recording or the amount of recording you have per track, okay? Everything needs to be in sync or else group editing might fail. Okay, I'm gonna explain. Let me recreate the problem. Now, all the tracks are the same except the snare okay? that has a cut at the beginning. So I'm gonna click on group editing and I'm gonna get this message. The tracks in this folder are not completely in sync. Group editing could fail, okay? So if you get this message, it means that all those recordings, part of the same folder are not completely the same. So you need to make sure they are uh, the same, okay? Now, before I do the manual editing, one thing I'm gonna tend to do is to select all of my channels and duplicate to a new track version. Okay, so this way, I always have access to my unedited version of the drum recording. Okay, so if I need to go back, something happened, I need to go back to the original recording, I can do so. Let me call this one v2 and you can find the track versions on the left zone in cubase make sure they are all selected all the tracks are selected before you duplicate and before you switch from one version to another okay now i'm gonna select my scissors and uh, just make a few cuts here to make things a bit tighter let me bring this snare the late snare a bit more close to the grid I'm gonna close this one also let me bring my events on top of each other. Let's have a quick listen. All right, uh, let me just uh, do it a bit more on this hit. And once I'm done, I'm gonna select all those cuts, click on X to create crossfades between the cuts and make sure I get smooth transitions. All right, and what I'm gonna do next is to double click on the crossfade and instead of using equal gain, which is on by default, I'm gonna put it to equal power. It sounds even smoother, okay? Now this part is way tighter and I did it manually. So that is one way you can uh, quantize live drums in Cubase. Now manual way will work well if I need to do just a few, uh, a few touch ups on a very good tight recording. But if I need to quantize most of the recording, I'm probably gonna start by using the second method I wanna show you is by creating slices. Okay, let me show you. I'm gonna go back a few steps here. Again, tracks are in the same folder. I'm gonna just deactivate group editing for now. And I'm first gonna create some hit points on my kick and snare channels. I'm gonna focus only on those. So I double click and I make sure that hit points is selected in the left zone and that will show me all of my hits and all the hit points that are on right now. I'm gonna readjust the amount of hit points uh, by just tweaking the amount of threshold level to make sure that Cubase creates hit points only on the kick snare in this case. Now, if I bring the, um, the threshold too low, 
it's going to start catching the bleed, which in this case is the snare, and it's going to create a hit point for a snare hit, which I want to avoid. So I'm just going to readjust and try to find the sweet spot for my hits. All right, so I think I'm at a good level. Let's have a listen. All right, so I'm just going to look at the full recording. Okay, and I have like two hit points here. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay, so this is an extra one that I don't need. So I'm going to click on edit hit points. So I'm going to click right on top where I see the X icon and delete that hit point that I don't need. And the same goes if I want to create a hit point. I make sure that edit hit points is on. And by keeping my finger on option on Mac or out on PC, I'll be able to manually create a hit point, okay? Now, I don't want to do this right now, but that can be very useful. Okay, next I'm going to double click on the snare, do the same thing here, adjust the snare, the, uh, the threshold to get the hit points on the snare. And uh, I'm gonna look around to make sure that everything looks good. All right, so now I'm good to go. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna activate my group editing, select one event, which is gonna select all events all together. And then I'm gonna open the quantize panel. I'm gonna get the hit point tracks and I'm gonna prioritize only the two tracks I added hit points on, which is the snare and kick. So I'm gonna remove the rack out of the priority list. Kick is gonna be high priority and second place is gonna be the snare, uh, meaning that if the kick and snare hit at the same time, it's gonna prioritize the kick in this case. And now the offset, let me just zoom in a bit. Now we have the um, um, the red line, which is the hit point that it's gonna track. I can move the offset to zero, which means that the cut is gonna be done at the beginning of the waveform, okay, of the kick and snare. I wanna avoid that. I wanna make sure I have a bit of headroom um, for the crossfade, okay? So I'm just gonna add maybe, I don't know, minus 15 of offset is gonna do the trick. Uh, then it's about the quantize settings. Um, it's set up right now to a 16th of a note, and I noticed kind of a swing feel to the groove, so I added a 55% of swing. Now I'm ready to just make the cuts and create the slices. And there you go. Now all of my hit points created slices. And from this point, I can just click on quantize and it's gonna move everything all together. And then I'm gonna click on crossfade. And there you go. There's a bunch of crossfades that has been created between all those cuts. I'm gonna click on editor and bring that to equal power once again. Okay, okay, that works pretty well. So let's listen, go back to the beginning of the recording and listen to the first few bars. Cool, so that works pretty well. From this point, once I'm done with the editing and everything is good, because I'm gonna listen to the whole track and make sure that all the cuts uh, were well done and the quantize sounds good, because it's gonna happen that I might uh, need to manually tweak a few things. <laughs> okay, now that obviously doesn't work, so I'm gonna Remove this part also, extend this one, crossfade again. So little tweaks like that, that I might need to do. Okay, same here, crossfade is not present. So there's things like that I'm gonna manually have to work on. So I always pay attention to this kind of stuff. Now, the next method you can use is by using audio warp. In this case, I'm gonna make sure that the phase coherent audio warp is active. So this way you will avoid running into some phasing issues uh, between the tracks when applying audio warp and stretching audio on all those tracks at the same time, okay? Uh, I'm gonna select all of them together. Okay, the phase coherent is on. I'm gonna go back to my 
uh, Quantize panel. This time around, I'm going to leave everything the same, but I'm just going to activate Audio Warp instead. So now Slices is out of the picture. So now I click on Create. It's going to create uh, Warp hit points at markers. And I'm going to click on Quantize. There you go. Now it did all of its moves without any slicing, without any crossfades, all within the Audio Warp system. It actually works pretty well for the most part, but there's also some side effects sometimes, like I actually hear kind of a fuzzy sound on the hi-hat at some point. It's pretty subtle, but you know, that can create those types of effects. Again, if I use the Audio Warp Quantize like I do with the slices, I'm gonna listen to the whole performance to make sure that everything sounds good. So this is the Audio Warp method, okay? So I can use all these different ways uh, to edit live drums in Cubase in the same style session if I need to. So it gives me several options to work with. So let me know on your side which one of these methods you like to work the most with. Leave your questions and comments down below. I hope that was helpful. Until next time, take care and see you.